You know, when it comes to the PT reading module, a lot of people use one method. And what's that method? Memorization. They try to go through every single test bank out there. They try to review every single website out there. They want to go through every single question and memorize it, hoping, wishing, praying that they get it on the real exam. Now, is that an effective technique? Yeah, it can be an effective technique. However, that's a big ass if. That's if you get it on the real exam. So does that mean I don't recommend it? Nah, not technically. I wouldn't say that because you still need to practice, right? You do need to take some questions and practice with them. So if that helps you remember some of the questions, yeah, that's helpful. But if you take all of the possible time that you have and put it into memorizing it, I think that's going to be asking for trouble, right? If you can split up that time, you know, because you have the practice and you practice those questions and you remember it, good for you. But at the same time, this is an English test. There are rules to this. So you might as well spend some of that time and learn the damn rules because for sure you will see these on the exam. Not exactly the same questions, but the exact same rules. So y'all ready for this? Let's get into it. Let's take a look at this sentence. Now, this is only one sentence, right? Obviously, in the reading fill in the blanks, there's going to be a paragraph. And in that paragraph, you're going to have multiple blanks. And then you have the options below. So I'll move out of the way. You can see the options below, right? Now, this question right here, right here, was taken from the official PT mock exam, test C. Now, obviously, I only took one of the sentences, but the entire paragraph can be, can be found on test C. And the reason why I took it from there is so you know that this is not a question that I remember from a previous test that I took. I didn't make this up. This is not a question that I took from one of those websites. This is an official question from PTE, so I can demonstrate that you will see this grammatical rule. The first thing I want to pull your attention to is this right here. Let's take a look at that was. What is was? It's called a B verb. Now, I don't care if you call it a B verb or a verb to be. It's the same thing. Whatever you call it, you call it that. And there are five of these. It's the is, am, are, was, were. Please remember that. When you know what a B verb is, you will know these rules. Okay? So is, am, are, was, were. That's the first thing. The second thing we want to be familiar with are these right here. With. What kind of word is that? What part of speech is that? That's called a preposition. Okay? These are prepositions. Does that mean there are only five? Absolutely not. This is just five, so I can make it even. In, on, for, with, about. That's not all of them. There are plenty more prepositions out there. You just want to get familiar with these because it will create a rule right now. When we have a B verb and then a preposition with a blank in the middle, there are four typical options. When I say four, you're probably thinking like, damn, that doesn't help. There's so many options. Technically, yes, but technically, no. Let me explain. When you have the was, I'm sorry, when you have the be verb, and then you have a preposition, this, number one, is your most likely option. And this is actually called a passive voice. What you're going to have is the be verb. You're going to have that preposition. What you have between that is called a past participle. Sounds difficult, right? Some of you probably learned the word third form. Eat, ate, eaten. That is what you will put in here to create that passive voice. Another option you can have would be be verb, adjective, and then preposition. This is actually very close behind to number one. These are the two most likely types of words, prep, uh, parts of speech you will put in here, okay? And then the other, the other three and four, the other two left right here, three and four, these are not as likely because you'll have a be verb, V-I-N-G, which is the verb I-N-G, and then a preposition. It's not likely, and I'll explain more. And then next you have the be verb, a noun, and then a preposition. This is very unlikely. It's not impossible, but unlikely. So that's why you want to look for these first. Let me give you an example of the sentences. The painting was moved by the guard. This is very common. This is your subject. Something happened to the subject. The subject is not doing anything. That's why it's called passive voice. So you see the be verb, 
you see the past participle, PP, or third form, and then you see the preposition. Very likely to see this in here. Another option you can have, very likely as well, subject, be verb again. This is the adjective. She was terrific in this movie. Was is the be verb, terrific is the adjective, and then you have preposition. These two, number one and two, are very, very likely. However, you have to determine. The first sentence is telling you something happened to the subject. The second sentence is describing the subject. So based on the context, you have to decide, did something happen to the subject or are we just describing it? All right. Again, those are the two common ones. The next one right here, um, V-I-N-G. So the teacher is preparing for class, is preparing for. Be verb, I-N-G, for. Shit, that sounds good, right? Well, I said this is not as common. And the reason is because the, the verb right here, the I-N-G, the only reason why the preposition is here is because this verb has to have a preposition. And that's not common. For example, let's say we are watching. What are you going to say after that? We are watching a movie, a show, whatever. There ain't no preposition, right? So you see, in this situation, that wouldn't work because the verb had to have a preposition. Let me give you another one. The teacher is teaching. When you say the teacher is teaching, do I need a preposition? Hell nah. The teacher is teaching a class. This situation, no preposition needed. So that's why I say the third one, the third one right here, be verb, V-I-N-G, preposition, not likely. And then the last one right here, verb, noun, shit, that is very, very unlikely. Humans are animals by nature. Humans, noun, are plus the noun. Yes, technically correct. We can have that. However, this is only when you're defining the, the noun, and, uh, the subject, right? You're defining what humans are. Humans are animals. So let me show you something. We're going to eliminate this option right now. Humans, plural. Are means we need something plural. Humans are animals, plural, right? Can I say humans are animal? Hell nah. Can I say students are child? No. We will say students are children. So it will define the singular or plural based on this. If you see this right here and you think about putting a noun, reintroducing the wolves, that's the noun, was. If you want to put a noun here, is it going to be singular or plural? Because this right here is was. It's got to be singular, right? It's got to be singular. Do we have any? Let's take a look at the options. Avoiding, seeking, colonies, populating, claimed, denied, and correlated. Do we have a singular noun? Hell nah. We only got one noun. Colonies. That ain't going to work. So this is out of there. Noun ain't going to work here. So based on these two options, it should be these two. The reason is because if you're looking at avoiding, ing. Can we have preposition? Avoiding? Avoiding something. No preposition. How about seeking? Seeking someone, right? Seeking something. No preposition. Populating. You populating. You are populating a place. No preposition. So this leaves you with passive voice. Now we only have claimed, denied, and correlated. Claimed, denied, and correlated. And this is another clue that can help you. Another rule. This is the dependent preposition. Claimed with, denied with, correlated with. Which one do you think sounds best with with? Would you agree that correlated with is the only one that sounds okay with with? Because the claimed is something. You claimed something or claimed by someone or denied something or denied by someone. There is no with with these two past participles. The only one that will work is correlated, and that is the answer. So I explained that really fast, right? But um, that's the beauty of having a video. You can rewind it, play it back again, okay? But I want to show you the very next sentence, the very next sentence in this reading fill-in-a-blanks question on mock test C, you're going to see, we're going to apply this rule 
right away. So let me erase the board and I'll put that sentence on here and we're going to apply the same rule that we just talked about. Let's go. All right, so here it is right here. This is the very next sentence in that same task, that reading fill in the blanks task from uh, mock test C. This is actually not the end of the sentence though. I didn't take the whole thing because we don't want to. I only want to look at this one with the rule, same rule. Now, what do we see here? Were. What is were? It's a be verb, right? Is, am, are, was, were. It is a verb to be, be verb, same thing. And now let's look after the blank. What is this? Sites. Is this a preposition? Do you think it's one of these type of words? Absolutely not. Sites is a noun. So what does that mean? It kind of eliminates a lot of options right now because for the first two, the first one and the second one, right? We have to have a preposition afterwards. After a PP, after an adjective, we got to have that preposition and we ain't got it. So this can't be a PP. It cannot be an adjective. Now, can, can this be the noun to be described by elk? So sites, do you know what this means? It's a place. So elk are a type of animals, like a deer or something like that. Elk were sites. So are we describing the type of sites elk are? These are two completely different things. So you know this option, humans are animal. The humans are animals. Elk, oops, elk are sites. Hell no, nah, that won't work. You're only left with one more option. Teacher is preparing. Elk were ing. And then you see, I said, when you have the ing, you don't have to have the preposition. He was watching a movie. The teacher is teaching a class. This does not have to be a preposition when you have ing. Now, how many ings do we have? We have avoiding, seeking, populating. Three of them. Three of them. So now, we can read through each one, or you can look at the similarities of the word. And I don't mean definition. Do you agree that avoiding, seeking, and populating out of these three words, avoiding would be something negative? Let me stand over here so you can see this word. I would say avoiding is something negative. Seeking and populating, no, they don't give out any negative feelings, right? So only avoiding. This is another clue you can look for in your reading fill in the blanks. When you're limited on options, when you only have two, maybe three options, try to think about the positives and the negatives. When you look at this sentence right here, does it feel positive or negative? Well, when we look at grazing and which they couldn't escape, when you're talking about the word escape, do you feel positive or negative? Would you agree that this should be negative? So based on this right here talking about escaping, I would put avoiding. So elk were avoiding sites from which they couldn't escape. That's the answer I would pick. And that, of course, that's the correct answer. There you go. So you can definitely, you can definitely go on websites, test banks, and memorize questions. For sure, you can do that. Nobody's stopping you. But if that is going to take the majority of the time, I would split that up. You can definitely learn some rules, right? You can definitely learn some rules and apply it on the um, reading fill in the blanks and sometimes even the reading and writing fill in the blanks because I see more and more grammatical questions now. All right, there you go. I hope it was helpful. I'll see you on the next one.